Your life so far is like climbing stairs. We are believing through our lives that there is a particular path of life for every one of us. Study, get good grades, go to university, graduate, get a job offer, work nine to five, move up the ladder, then you achieve success approaching retirement. The future seems like full of possibilities. And when you finally graduate, you realize you are not quite prepared for the real world. You are probably thinking, every job advertisement said they want someone with relevant experiences. But how do you get your first ever experience as a first graduate? And how much do you think what you learned at universities can be applied to your workplace in a practical sense? What employers are really looking for if they have plans to hire graduates? There is a book called *The Startup of You*, which is co-authored by one of the co-founders of LinkedIn. The book introduces a concept that to get ahead in your career progression in the current age. We have to think and act like an entrepreneur. It's not encouraging everybody to start companies. It's the mindset of thinking yourself as a CEO of you. Being nimble, self-reliant, innovative, network effectively, and invest in your own learning and development. The place where you are going to work at. Is in fact a platform for you to shine and make a difference in the area that you care about, and you are the one who owns your career, not the platform. Now think of job searching as a matching process of supply and demand of the services you provide for a fair amount of rewards, and imagine that you are the boss of your consultancy firm. What do you have to offer? What problems can you help solve? Who need your talents most? What are their pain points as well as their desires? How can you reach out and win them over to buy your services? This paradigm shift will allow you to see the whole job search exercise very differently. There are many benefits of seeing yourself as the CEO of you in the job seeking process. One, by thinking like that, you automatically put yourself in an equal emotional state in the negotiation table in the job seeking process. Two, you are not begging for a job, which is a scarcity thinking. There is a demand out there for your competencies. You can offer. Three, you will be quick to see in what way you can offer the most added values to your employers. And four, employers today are actually hungry for talents with entrepreneurial mentality to adapt to the rapid economic and technology changes. Next, I'm going to talk about how to become a master of your state of mind. I called this student records a job-winning guide for a reason. It all starts in your mind before you are going to see the results externally. Two people can encounter the same experience but associate very different meanings to that same situation. Let me give you an example. Two people sent out their resumes to a company that they admired. Neither of them hear back from the company after two weeks' time. One person thinks he is not qualified, that he doesn't have what it takes, and feels beaten up, and tries to distract his disappointment by playing games and watching dumb movies for the coming two weeks. Another person considers that a feedback, for which his resume might not stand him out from the crowd, so he seeks help. From the professional, and attend networking sessions to reach out to employees working there. So apparently, the meaning you associate with 
your life experiences creates your emotions, and your emotions governs your motivation to take further actions. You see, you would never know why you don't hear back from a company after a job application, but you can always choose to create stories that is helpful for you. Besides choosing to focus on the positive side of a life event, according to Tony Robbins, emotion is created by motion. In other words, emotions are linked to the movement in our bodies. If you observe your posture when you are happy, as opposed to when you are sad, they're very different, right? So you can change how you feel as quick as an instant by standing up straight. Putting your arms up in the air, take a deep breath, put a smile on your face, or do some power poses. People nowadays are spending too much time keeping their heads down on their phones, which is not helpful at all to keep you happy and powerful. Instead, you can build emotional healthy habits, like doing exercise every day, saying positive things to yourself. And have gratitude for things you have in life. Now I want to teach you another technique to keep you on a winning state, which is to set an anchor and create your unique lucky charm. Pick anything small, handy, and something you like as your lucky charm, or a lucky pen. Actually, anything could work as long as you can bring it along with you to a job interview. Now, hold this object in your hand and close your eyes to do a creative visualization together. In your mind, go back to the moments that makes you feel you are extremely confident, that you are like a winner, you are unstoppable. And you can conquer the world if you want. It can be when you was winning a football match when you were ten. It can be the moment when you were on top of a mountain and shouting to the other end, hearing the echo of your voice. Just feel and experience that moment fully, as if they are happening right now. And then, in your mind's eye, see yourself take out the lucky charm from your pocket, and say, "Yes, I can do it." Now, open your eyes. You've now given a new meaning to this object in your hand, which could be very helpful in overcoming your anxiety right before a job interview. Actually, I have a whole episode dedicated on confidence and peak stage performance in session four, so don't miss it. Before I let you go, I would like to wrap this up with a quote. Robin S. Sharma said, "We are all here for some special reasons. Stop being a prisoner of your past. Become the architect of your future." Thank you for your patience with me in understanding the importance of having the right mindset. So, in the next section, I'm going to teach you how to find your edge and your market positioning. Then we are going to explore how to set career goals and conduct research the right way. <laughs>